Hey, hey, what's up, my friends? So welcome to the Ultimate Candlestick Patterns Trading Course for Beginners. So I remembered more than 10 years ago when I was in the army, right? I remember seeing one friend of mine holding this book on candlestick patterns and I was intrigued. I was thinking to myself, right? How can anyone, you know, memorize a few candlestick patterns and then trade the markets profitably? So I was intrigued, I was curious, I snatched the book from him. No, just kidding, I was just asked him nicely, hey bro, can you lend me the book? So I took the book from him nicely and devoured right, everything I could on candlestick patterns. I learned anything that I couldn't get my hands on. And guess what? I was consistent, consistently losing right from the financial markets. And that's because my entire approach to candlestick patterns was wrong. So this is why in today's training, right, I want to share with you the truth about candlestick patterns that nobody tells you. You will also learn right, how to read and understand any candlestick patterns, even if you have no trading experience. You will learn right, the two common mistakes that almost all new traders make when trading with candlestick patterns and how you can avoid it. I'll share with you a powerful candlestick trading strategy to profit in bull and bear markets. And along the way, I'll share with you a ton of charts and examples so you can master candlestick patterns fast. Sounds good? Then let's dive in. So what is a candlestick pattern? Well, a candlestick pattern is a method of reading a price chart. So you have things like a bar chart, a line chart, and then we have candlestick chart. So to read a candlestick pattern, we have four data points, the open, high, low, and close. Don't worry, we'll get to that shortly if that confuses you. So when it comes to candlestick pattern, it can be formed across different time frames. So it doesn't matter what time frame you're trading on, whether you're on a five minutes chart, the one hour or the daily, you can apply right, candlestick charts, candlestick patterns to your trading. So let's say you're on the one hour time frame. This means that every candle, every candlestick pattern will be formed every one hour. If you're on a daily time frame, every candlestick pattern will be formed every day. And if you're on the weekly time frame, every candle will be formed every week, right? There you have it, right? So how do you read a candlestick pattern? So let me explain. So when you are dealing with candlestick patterns, you would usually see one of two candles. It either it's a green candle or a red candle. Sometimes it could be black or white, or sometimes it could be no color. And that's what we call a doji. And I'll cover that later on. But for most of the time, right, when you look at most charting platform, it's usually a green and red candle. So that's what we'll go with. So how do you interpret this green candle? So remember I said that candlestick patterns, it has four data points. So first here, for a green candle, we call this a bull candle. This is the opening price. Okay, this here. This is the closing price. This over here is the high. You might be thinking, okay, Rainer, high of what? Well, it depends on the time frame you're on. If you're on the daily time frame, this will be the high of the day. And then this is the low of the day. If you're on the monthly time frame, then this is the high of the month, and then this is the low of the month. This will be the opening price of the month, and this is the closing price of the month. So it's all relative to the time frame that you are using candlestick patterns. Now moving on, a bear candle. So how do you interpret this one over here? So for a red candle, a bear candle, the opening price is here. And the closing price is here. The high is the same over here, and the low is over here. So if you think about this, right, the main difference between a bull and bear candle is the location of their open and closing price. So for a bull candle, the opening price is here. The closing price is here. So for a bull candle, it means that the market has closed above the opening price. For a bear candle, it means that the market has closed below the opening price. So you can see the closing price here is below the opening price. For this one, the closing price here is above the opening price that you see over here, closing above the opening. So in summary, right, what we have just covered is this chart over here. So I'll just go through this, right? So you can see this is the high and this is the low. So this is the high of what? Well, it depends on the time frame you're on. If this is on the one hour time frame, this is the high, right, for the past one hour. And this is the low for the past one hour. Opening price is here, this is the closing price. Again, High is over here for red candle. This is the low as well, depending on the time frame. If you're on the weekly time frame, this is the high of the week. This is the low of the week. This is the opening price for a bear candle. This is the closing price of a bear candle. And a couple of terminologies to walk you through. So when you see a candle stick pattern, there are two components to it. One is what we call the wick or the upper shadow. So this one here, okay, you can either call it the shadow or the wick. So since this is at the higher portion, we call this the upper shadow or upper wick. And this is the lower one, we call this the lower shadow or lower wick. And the colored portion of the candlestick pattern, this over here, 
this is what we call the body, the body of the candle. This over here is the body of the candle. Okay, so this black line here is called the shadow or wick. And the colored one is called the body. So moving on, right? There are different types of candlestick patterns, but I would say four main categories. So there are many different candlestick patterns out there, I would say hundreds or more, but if you really kind of categorize them, right, they are likely to end up in one of these four categories. Number one is the bullish reversal candlestick patterns. Number two, bearish reversal candlestick patterns. Number three, indecision candlestick patterns and trend continuation candlestick patterns. First, let's get started with the bullish reversal candlestick pattern. So here are a few to share with you. Number one is what I call the hammer. Okay, so let's, you know, walk you through what a hammer is. So again, there are four data points to every candlestick pattern. This is what the opening, high, low, or close. This is the opening price. This over here is the closing price. And then this is the high, and this is the low. Okay, and remember, the high and low is relative to the time frame that you're on. If you're on a yearly time frame, this is the high of the year, and then this is the low of the year. But let's say this is the daily time frame. This will be the high of the day, low of the day. So why is this hammer, right, a bullish reversal candlestick pattern? So let me walk you through the story behind it. So we can see when the price opened for the day, right, the sellers immediately took control and pushed the price down lower near these lows of the day. So when the, the sellers were pushing the price down lower, they, you know, they were thought they had won the war. You know, they're victorious. But somehow, you know, the, the buyers, right, they, they regain strength, they gain control, they inject themselves with steroids there and start pushing back against the sellers. So the buyers push back all the way against the sellers, reversing all their losses and finally closing, right, near the high of the day over here. So you can imagine this, like, you know, in, like, in movies, right? You know, you watch, uh, uh, you know, the good guys getting beaten up, getting trashed, you know, when all hope is lost, right? They think of their loved ones, all the sacrifice, all the training that they've been through, and they, ta -da, they come back and they start, you know, beating the bad guys and they, and they uh, you know, they win the, the battle, right? Same thing over here for, for this hammer. So another variation of the bullish reversal candlestick pattern could be the bullish engulfing pattern. So the story is similar to the hammer. Only difference is that this is a two candlestick pattern formation. So this one over here, the first candle you can see, sellers are in control, price open here, and then the sellers took control and push the price to close near the low of the, let's say this is the daily time frame, close to near the low of the day. Next day, when the market opened, the buyers right, push back right, all the way up higher, and finally closing right near the highs of the day. The buyers are st so strong right, that they even close the price right, above the previous day highs. Right, so you can see that this is a significant uh, sign of strength from the buyers. So this is theoretically how these uh, patterns should look like, but when you see on a chart, sometimes it's a little bit different, like you know, theory and real world of trading. So let me just share with you a chart, and let's you know, find right some of these patterns together. So I'm not going to go through the entire chart, but a few that stick out to me is that this one over here, this looks like a bullish engulfing pattern. Right, the key thing for a bullish engulfing pattern is that the body. The body of the bull candle has covered, has engulfed the body of the previous candle. So if you look at this candle over here, the body of this candle has covered and engulfed the body of the previous candle. Okay, so this over here is a hammer, as you can see, quite straightforward. And uh, let's find another one. This one here is not a bullish engulfing pattern, as you can see that this body of this green candle, it didn't cover the body of the previous candle. We call this a piercing pattern. I didn't cover that, right, because... Uh, I don't want to confuse you too much, but you can see this is also a bullish reversal candlestick pattern as the buyers, they managed to reverse right, most of the losses from the previous day. So this is how a bullish reversal candlestick patterns look like. And moving on, bearish reversal candlestick pattern. So first one to note is what we call a shooting star. So again, let me walk you through this uh, candlestick pattern. This is the opening price, this is the closing price, this is the high, and this is the low. So what's the story behind a shooting star? So you can see when the market first opened, the buyers, they were in control, they pushed the price all the way up higher. They are about to, you know, declare victorious, right? And suddenly out of the blue, the sellers came in and drive down the price lower. So the sellers pushed the price down all the way down lower, finally closing near the low of the day, assuming this is the daily time frame. So this analogy could be like, you know, you you gotten back your exam results. You got an A. Wow, I got an A. And it's only when you realize that it's A for absent. You didn't even turn up for the paper. So that's why you got an A. So your whole world come crashing down. Okay, so kind of same story over here for the shooting star. 
And of course, you have another variation of a bullish or rather bearish reversal candlestick patterns. You have a bearish engulfing pattern as well. So this one, the story is similar, just that you know this one takes two candlestick patterns to form. First one is a bull candle, market closed near the highs of the day. Second day, right, market open here, and then the sellers took con sellers to control and immediately push the price down lower, closing near the lows of the days, reversing right all the gains of the previous day. So this one tells you that you know uh, the sellers right are temporarily in control. So again, looking at the charts, just to you know familiar familiarize with it. So let's have a look at a few bearish engulfing pattern and shooting star. So this over here, a bearish engulfing pattern. Notice how the candle of this uh, red one has engulfed or covered the body of the previous day candle. This is another bearish engulfing pattern. And uh, this is another bearish engulfing pattern. I would say this is a shooting star. This, you know, if you look at this, you might say, you know, this isn't quite like a shooting star because if you saw earlier the shooting star, it was actually a red color body. But here is where it comes, you know, where you need to use a bit of common sense. If you look at this candlestick pattern, yes, this over here, right, didn't have a red body. It's a green body. The price has closed marginally higher. But if you look at the candlestick patterns right, in the context of the entire range of the day, you can see that the, when the market opened here, the buyers pushed the price higher at one point near the highs of this day. And then the seller drive the price down lower, closing right near the lows of the day over here. So you can see that, yes, it's a bull candle, but you can see that there's a strong rejection right of higher prices. If you look at this entire upper wick, right, this wick over here, this is rejection right of higher prices all the way down over here. Let me just, uh, just uh, show you what I mean, right? So this over here, this entire wick, this black line over here is rejection of higher prices. So yes, this to me, even though it isn't what a textbook, textbook will call a shooting star pattern, but I would say this to me is still a bearish pattern because the market right has rejected higher prices. So moving on, right, let's have a look at indecision candlestick patterns. Now, an indecision candlestick pattern literally, you know, means what it is. So there are a few of this, right, number one being a doji. So why is this candle called a doji? What's the significance of a doji? So if you look at this candlestick pattern, you will realize that this candle is missing a body. So if you look at the earlier candlestick patterns, which I've shared with you, you know, red color, green color, they all have body. And the reason why a doji is called a doji is because it doesn't have a body. And the reason why it doesn't have a body is because the opening price and the closing price is at the same price level. So that's why there isn't any body for this candlestick pattern. So this is the opening price and this is the closing price. This is the high of the day and this is the low of the day. So if you look at this kind of story behind it, you can see that the price uh, during the day, the buyers were in control. They pushed the price up higher. Then the sellers, you know, took charge, push the price down lower near this low of the day. Then the buyers, you know, decided to step in and push the price up higher, but just couldn't quite, you know, break above the highs. Eventually, they settled at the same price point where the market has opened. So this tug of war between the buyers and sellers, it's a kind of like even, right? There's no winner as of yet. So this is why we call this an indecision candlestick pattern. The market is undecided. So it's like you messaging, you know, a girl that you like. Sometimes she gives you long-winded, you know, three, four paragraphs reply. Sometimes you get just one word. And you're scratching your head, you know, does she like me or not? Same feeling down here. You're have, you have dojit, man. You are dojit, okay? Okay, so that's a, a doji feeling. <laughs> okay, so uh, another variation is a bullish spinning top pattern. So the, the story behind this is similar to a doji is that the market is undecided. The reason why they call this a bullish spinning top is because now you have a body, a small body over here. This is the opening price. This is the closing price. But in the grand scheme of things, right, this is still an uh, undecided market. I would say the buyers just have the marginally the slight advantage over the sellers. But in the grand scheme of things, the market is still kind of undecided. So we call this a uh, bullish spinning top because the market has uh, closed marginally higher compared to the opening price. And then on the opposite end, we have the bearish spinning top. Another, another uh, indecision, indecision candlestick pattern. You can see that this is the opening price and this is the closing price. It's bearish because right, the market is closed below the opening price. But in the grand scheme of things, you can see that the market is still largely undecided because the closing price right, is kind of like in the middle, right? Between in the middle of the range of the candle. So the range of the candle is between these highs and these lows, right? Between these highs and these lows. So when, if the price closes in the middle of the range, right, then it's largely undecided because there isn't a clear winner. But if the market can close near the high of the day, it's telling you that the buyers are in control. That's why they managed to close near the highs of the day. 
And if the market can close near the lows of the day, you can say that you know the sellers they are temporarily in control. That's why they managed to push push the price down to near the lows of the day. But if the close right is kind of like in the middle, the range of the candlestick pattern, then the market is largely undecided as what you have seen over here. Okay, these three different uh, candlestick patterns. So let's have a look at the chart so you can see how it looks like. So you can see over here, I will call this a this is what we call a bullish spinning top. Yes, it's a green candle, but you can see it's quite undecided because the the price right has closed kind of in the middle of the range between these highs and then these lows near the middle. Okay, this is another bullish spinning top. This is a bearish spinning top. Uh, what else? We can see that, uh, you can see over here, this is a doji. Okay, but this doji, right, you would, I would say, right, this is clearly, right, not a indecision in the markets. This is something, right, telling me that the buyers are in control. Why is that? Let me explain. So you see over here, this doji is actually called a dragonfly doji. The opening price and closing price is at the same price level. However, the story behind it is that at this opening price at one point, the sellers tried to drive the price down lower at this low over here. Then the buyers, right, pick things up, right, and push the price up higher, closing, right, where they left off. And if you look again, right, where did the price close relative to the range of the candle? You can see it closed, right, near the high of the day. So this, right, to me, is a sign of strength. This lower wick, this lower shadow is rejection of lower prices. So this, again, this over here, it's a bullish reversal candlestick pattern to me. But the name here is called a Dragonfly Doji. But uh, don't treat it as an indecision candle because if you read the story closely, you can see actually rejection of lower prices. So the key thing when it comes to candlestick pattern is not to blindly memorize these patterns, right? It's very important to pay attention, right? Where did the price close, right? Relative to the range of the candle. So let me give you another example. If you look at a bearish engulfing pattern, why is this a bearish reversal pattern because if you look at the closing price of the candle it closes near the low near the low of the range of the candle the range of the candle is between this high and this low the bearish engulfing pattern closes near the low of this candle's range so this is why it's a bearish reversal candlestick pattern okay but for now we are actually talking about doji so let me just point to you one more example this is a perfect example of a doji indecision in this market because the upper wick and the lower wick, they are pretty much, I would say, of equal length. Opening and closing price is at the same price point. So now moving on, let's talk about the trend continuation candlestick patterns. So a trend continuation candlestick patterns, right, literally, you know, mean what it is, right? So there are two to share with you. Number one is what we call the falling tree method. You can see this one over here. The first candle is a strong bearish candle. Then the next three candles, right, you can see that the buyer is trying to push the price up higher. And on this fifth candle, this is a powerful candle because this red candle over here has closed near the lows of the day. And not just that, right, this candle over here has erased, right, the gains, right, made over the last three days. So this is a strong sign of weakness in the market and there's a good chance that this market could continue down lower. So this is why we call it a falling tree method. So the other pattern is what we call the rising tree method. So again, first candle is a strong bull candle. And then the next three candles, the sellers try to push the price down lower, but just can't quite do it. On the fifth candle, the buyers, you know, step in and close, right, near the high of the day. And this, again, is a powerful candle because if you look at this candle, it has erased, right, the losses, right, over the last three days. Okay, so this is the falling tree method and this is the rising tree method. Now, some of you might be thinking, hey, Rainer, why is this called a falling tree method? Isn't this tree candles rising? And hey, Rainer, why is this called a rising tree method? Isn't this tree candles falling? Is this a typo? Is this, you know, uh, something that you got it wrong? No, I checked, right? it's correct. And don't ask me why they come up with this naming convention. I have no idea myself. So, so yeah, so just bear this in mind, even though it sounds a little bit contradicting at times. And another thing to point out is that to be honest, right, when you look at a chart, you rarely get a falling tree method and you rarely will see a rising tree method because this candlestick patterns, right, is so precise. You know, the first candle must be green, then three red candles, then fifth candle must be green again. It rarely happens, right, in the real world of trading. But the reason why I'm sharing this with you is because this is very similar to classical technical analysis. So if you look at this pattern over here, the falling tree method, okay, this is actually what we call a a bear flag pattern. So let me just erase uh, this chart over here. Okay, so a bear flag pattern looks like this. Market heads down lower, it makes a weak pullback, and then when it breaks this low, it continues down lower again. So this is what we call a bear flag pattern, and it's similar right, to the falling tree method that you have seen earlier. And the opposite end of things is what we call a bull flag pattern. Market hits higher, 
make a weak pullback and then when the price breaks above this highs, right, it's what we call this portion here is what we call a bull flag pattern. So if you look at this, right, in the context of the falling tree and a rising tree method, right, you would know what's the meaning behind it, right, even though you, even though that, you know, let's say you couldn't, you couldn't find this on the charts, okay? So let me just, you know, show you a chart, right, so you can see the bull and bear flag in action because a bull and bear flag is much more common, right, compared to the rising tree and falling tree method. So you can see over here, copper futures, this is a bull flag pattern. Okay, notice the, this weak pullback. For a bull flag pattern, right, the definition is not as precise where you must have a three down candle. No, it doesn't state that. The main thing is just that the pullback is weak, the range of the candles is small, right, and then followed by a breakout of the high of the flag and the market is expected to continue higher. So another example, dollar against the South African Rand. You can see the bear flag pattern over here, this one over here. Okay, the market break down this low of the flag and continue down lower. This is another uh, bear flag pattern. Okay, then market continues down lower. So when you see, when you compare this uh, classical technical analysis to candlestick patterns, right? Classical technical analysis in this case, right? They are more robust in the sense that it's not as precise that state, oh, it must be a tree candle up and then followed by one down candle. No, it's not that precise and not that exact. So this is why the message that I want to bring across is that when you're dealing with candlestick patterns, Understand the context, understand the story of the candlestick patterns, right? Don't memorize, right, candle for candle. Oh, this one must be up, this one is down, blah, blah, blah. No, you will confuse yourself. And when you translate it into real world of trading, you find that some of these patterns hardly occur, like the, you know, the rising tree and the falling tree method, okay? So let's do a quick recap, shall we? Number one, every candlestick pattern has four data points, open, high, low, and close. Next one, we spoke about the bullish reversal candlestick patterns like the hammer and the bullish engulfing pattern. Then we spoke about bearish reversal candlestick patterns like the shooting star and the bearish engulfing pattern. Then we spoke about indecision candlestick patterns, the doji, the spinning top, etc. And then finally, the trend continuation candlestick patterns like the rising tree method and the falling tree method. And then I also focused, right, to tell you not to blindly memorize these candlestick patterns because some of them rarely occur on the chart. So understand the meaning behind these patterns is more important than trying to pinpoint the exact pattern on the chart. Understand the story behind these candlestick patterns, right? The context of it, that's far more effective. And at this point, right, some of you might be thinking, ah, Reina, you know, candlestick patterns, that's easy, right? I'll just spot a hammer on the chart and I click buy, poof, profits! Well, if you do that, right, then you're actually making, right, a common mistake, right, that almost all traders make when they deal with candlestick patterns. This is why in the next section, I want to share with you, right, common mistakes to avoid, right, when trading with candlestick patterns. And if you're losing money with candlestick patterns so far, it's likely because you're making one of these mistakes. So let's move on. Okay, now let's talk about the first mistake. Have a look at this chart over here. So what I've drawn over here, the arrows are simply highlighting, right, a few bearish engulfing patterns that are on the chart. So many traders will, you know, study all this reversal candlestick patterns. Oh, Rainer, a shooting star. Oh, Rainer, a bearish engulfing pattern. Time to short. And if you do that, right, blindly, just based on the candlestick patterns, you can see that it's going to be a painful experience. So you can see over here, this is a bearish engulfing pattern. If you go short, probably this is a losing trade. This is another bearish engulfing pattern. The market did move slightly in your favor, but let's be honest, you wouldn't take profit in time. You will likely get stopped out. This is another losing trade. This is another losing trade. This is uh, maybe a break even, but probably a losing trade. And this is another losing trade. So you can see that, you know, if you just blindly buy hammer, you blindly, you know, shot when you see a shooting star, you blindly shot when there's a bearish engulfing pattern, your results is going to be quite painful. So what is the mistake down here? And it's very simple. The mistake is this. Trading against the trend, right? So candlestick patterns, right? As much as possible, you want to be trading in the direction of the trend. So for example, if you see the market is in an uptrend, you want to be looking to trade, right? Bullish reversal candlestick patterns like the hammer, the bullish engulfing pattern. If you see the market is in a downtrend, then you want to be looking to, you know, spot for bearish reversal candlestick patterns like the shooting star or the bearish engulfing pattern. Does it make sense? So as much as possible, trade in the direction of the trend. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, counter trend trading doesn't work. It can work for advanced traders if you, if you know more, more about technical analysis. But for now, for beginners, my recommendation is don't trade against the trend. Your life will be much easier. Mistake number two, have a look at this chart, okay? So this chart you can see over here, market is in a downtrend. Notice a series of lower lows and lower highs, lower high, lower high, lower high, market is in a downtrend. And then over here, we have a bearish engulfing pattern. So Rainer said, okay, look, right, to trade bearish reversal candlestick patterns when the trend is down. So now the trend is down, 
Okay, Rainer, so I'll look to, you know, go short, right, in this market condition. Well, just hold your horses first. And the reason for this is because, again, right, yes, I agree that the market is in a downtrend, but I don't recommend shorting, right, just because you spot this bearish engulfing pattern here. Why? And the reason is simple. If you look at this market condition, you will notice that this blue line over here, which is the 50-day moving average, it serves to act as like a area of value on this chart. I'll share more what an area of value is, but you can see you can treat it like a mean, right? You can see that this market tends to pull back towards the 50 period moving average once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times. So in other words, right, if you ask me, there's a good chance that this market could retest back this 50 period moving average again. And if the market does make a pullback, imagine, right, if you are short down here, you are short near this low over here and the market makes a pullback, you will likely get stopped out. Okay, it's like kind of like, you know, having a rubber band in your hands. If you stretch the rubber band quite a bit, right, what are the odds of the rubber band stretching further or reverting back to the mean? Well, I'm sure you can agree that there's more likelihood that the, mark, the, the rubber band will, you know, revert, revert back to the mean. And it's the same for this market condition over here. If you look at this market condition, you can see that the market right now is kind of like overextended, overstretched, right, towards the downside. There's a good chance it could, you know, revert back towards this mean, towards this area of value near the 50-day moving average. So yes, market is in a downtrend. Yes, we have this bearish engulfing pattern, but we still don't want to short the market quite yet. And this brings me to mistake number two, which is, you know, trading far from an area of value, right? Don't trade far from an area of value because when the market makes a pullback, right, you will likely get stopped out of your trade. So now at this point, you might be wondering, okay, Rainer, I, I can't, you know, trade against the trend and not far from an area of value. Then how should I trade candlestick patterns? Well, that's what I'll cover right now. Introducing, right, the Tay formula. So now, what does the Tay formula stand for? So let me explain. T stands for trend, simply means, right, to trade in the direction of the trend. So if the market is in an uptrend, you only look for buying opportunities. And likewise, if the market is in a downtrend, you only look for selling opportunities. So let me illustrate to you, you know, what do I mean by trends? So for an uptrend, it will look something like this. The market hits higher, pulls back, breaks out, hits higher, pull back, hits higher, pull back, hit higher. So if you look at it, at the big picture wise, you will see a series of higher highs, higher highs, higher highs, and higher low, higher low, higher low. And if you look right from left to right, you can see the market right trending, moving right higher over time. This is what we call an uptrend. And if you spot an uptrend on the charts, you only want to be looking for buying opportunities. So on the other hand, right, downtrend is just the opposite. I will go faster for this. So market hits lower, pullback hits lower, pullback hits lower, pullback hits lower. So you can see, right, series of lower lows and lower highs. Overall, from left to right, market is heading down lower over time. So this is a downtrend. And when the market is in a downtrend, we only want to look for selling opportunities. So let me share with you a, a chart, right, a few charts so you can see what I mean. So if you look at this chart over here, let me ask you, is this market condition in an uptrend or a downtrend? So again, right, the concept is pretty simple. If you look from left to right, you can see this market is heading higher over time. If you identify the swing highs and swing lows, you can see a series of higher high, higher high, higher high, higher high, 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 higher low, higher low, higher low. So market is in an uptrend. And if you look at this chart over here, is this market in an uptrend or a downtrend? So again, if you spot the swing highs and swing low, right? Lower high, lower high, lower high, lower low, lower low, lower low. So I miss out a few swing highs along the way, but I just want to share with you the big picture is that from left to right, this market is heading lower over time and you want to look for selling opportunities. So one tip to share with you is that if when you look at a chart and you kind of squint your eyes, you know, ask yourself, you know, is this an uptrend or a range? I'm not sure. Then just move on to something else. No one is pointing a gun at your head and say, oh, you better, you know, decide whether it's a trend or not. No, right? You have options. If you can't decide, if it's not clear, move on onto a clearer market or to something, another market which is clearer where the trend is more obvious, okay? Don't force the trade or don't, you know, uh, force things, right, when you are in doubt. So when you're in doubt, stay out. So moving on, right, this is the trend portion. What about the second part of the Tay formula? A, A stands for area of value. So what is area of value? So in an uptrend, an area of value is the area on your chart where buying pressure, could step in and push the price higher. 
And if the market is in a downtrend, the area of value is an area on your chart where selling pressure could step in and push the price lower. So the way you want to identify your area of value, you can use things like support and resistance, moving average, etc. So let me give you an example. So let's say we talk about support and resistance. If the market is in an uptrend, hitting higher, pullback, hitting higher, pullback, hitting higher, pullback. An area of value could be over here, right? This is an area of support, right? Tested once as bounce of support, bounce of support, and then come back here a second time. This is an area of value in this uptrend. This is an area of support in this existing uptrend, and this is where we want to be trading from from this area of value. Okay. Likewise, if the market is in a downtrend, like this, okay, the area of value would be something like this. You know, look to sell at resistance in this downtrend at this area of value when the market is trending down lower. And support and resistance is just one way to define your area of value. Another way that I like to use it is to use the moving average. So for example, let's say market is in an uptrend, pulls back higher, pulls back higher, pulls back higher. Then you overlay with, let's say, a moving average, like the 50 period moving average like this. You find that this market right has bounced off the moving average repeatedly. I look for at least two bounces, right? So it bounced over once here, second time. And the third time, right, I would say that I would treat this moving average as an area of value because this market, right, has proven to me that it has bounced off the 50 period moving average at least twice. So there's a there's a good chance, right, it could bounce off the third time as well. So I will treat this moving average as an area of value as well. So let me share with you a few charts so you know what I mean. So let me just uh, share with you over here. If you look at this chart of copper and I overlay with the 50 period moving average, you can see that this market has respected the 50 period moving average a number of times, right? Tested once, twice. Uh, three times, four times, five times, and now possibly five, another six times over here. Okay, so this is an area of value. This is where I want to look for buying opportunities, right, for this market. So if I use a tool like, let's say, a rectangle, right, I can draw this area of support, this area of value over here. Does it make sense? So in other words, right, in this uptrend for this market condition, this is where I'm looking for buying opportunities, somewhere about here. And if you look closely, right, you have the confluence of the 50 period moving average plus this previous swing high, which could act as support. So this definitely right, is an area you want to pay attention to and look for buying opportunities. I won't blindly buy when the market comes into this price level. I'll explain why shortly, right? But for now, this is how you identify an area of value in an uptrend. So on the opposite, right, end of things, right, a downtrend. In this case, you can see this market is in a downtrend. So where is the area of value. So again, you can just use a tool, a rectangle tool or a line tool, whichever you prefer. You can see over here, this is an area of resistance. This one is another one over here. So you can see that this market could possibly right pull back towards this area of value here where previous swing low, right, which could now act as resistance once over here and the second time over here. Or it can make a deeper pullback right back into this area of resistance as well, which was previous support, 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 right, which became resistance and possibly resistance over here as well. So once you have identified the market which is trending, the next thing to do is to identify your area of value. So you can use things like support resistance, moving average, etc. And once you have nailed this down, the third thing is to look for a valid entry trigger. And what is an entry trigger? This is simply a price pattern, right, that tells you that the buyers are momentarily in control and you can now enter a trade. So this is where Candlestick patterns are useful to serve as an entry trigger. We covered so much, right? Like, you know, the hammer, the shooting star, etc. So now let's, you know, kind of combine all this, right? All the things that you have learned, right? And see how we can actually use it to trade the markets profitably. So let me give you an example, right? To uh, kind of like combine right, all these tools and concepts that you have just learned. So let's say first thing we're looking for, the Tay formula is market to be in an uptrend like this. Okay, series of higher highs and higher lows area of value. Let's say the market comes back into this area of support and this uptrend. Great. Entry trigger. We can look for things like a hammer. Right? Remember I said that you know you want to be trading the uh, candlestick patterns right, in the direction of the trend. So if the market is in an uptrend, you look for a bullish hammer, a bullish engulfing pattern right, as an entry trigger. So in this case, let's say you got, an, got a hammer like this. Okay. And then what you can do is you can look, look to enter on the next day open right when this trading setup occurs. So let me share with you a few charting examples so you can understand this trading strategy. Now, this is the chart of dollar against the Norwegian chrono. So using the Tay formula that you have just learned, 
the first part of the Tay formula is the trend. What is the trend of this market? So you can see this is the eight hour time frame on dollar against the Norwegian Chrono. And if you can't tell what is the trend, then a tip for you is to just zoom out your charts so you know you can see a better picture. So clearly you can agree, right, that this market, the trend, it's in a downtrend. Okay, that's the first part. Second part, did the price come towards an area of value? We want to be trading from an area of value. So is it near an area of value? So in this case, you can see this is previous support, 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 support. Price breaks below support. Now previous support becomes what? Resistance. And now it's at resistance again. So yes, right, the price is at an area of value. It's at resistance. Next thing, E, entry trigger. Do we have a valid entry trigger, you know, to, to short this market? So look at the charts. Clearly, you can see that we have this bearish candle over here. And it's not quite what you've just learned. Earlier, you learned, you know, shooting star and the bearish engulfing pattern. But this doesn't seem to, you know, resemble any of it, right? So, but here's the thing. Let me just walk you through the, the uh, psychology of this market. So I said earlier that, you know, there's no point trying to memorize every single candlestick pattern because when it comes to the real world of trading, sometimes you may not get the pattern, right, that you have memorized. So this is why it's important instead to read, to analyze, to read the price action of the markets. So if you look at this, right, this green candle over here, the buyers, right, they tried to break out of resistance but got rejected by selling pressure and they just pretty much closed in the middle of this range over here of this candle. So if you ask me, right, this candle over here, I would say, you know, it's kind of like undecided. There are sellers in the background. At the same time, there are buyers trying to push the price higher. So this is why the price has closed in the middle of the range of this candle. So the range of this candle is between these highs and these lows. And the price pretty much closed in the middle of it. So uh, I would say, you know, it's kind of like a tug of war be between the buyers and sellers with the buyers having the slight upper hand. So when you look at the next candle over here, which is this red one over here, this is where you have a clue that the sellers right, are stepping in and taking control. So this actually in Japanese candlestick terms is what we call a duck cloud cover. So it's similar to a bearish engulfing pattern. The only difference between a duck cloud cover and a bearish engulfing pattern is that a duck cloud cover, it doesn't cover, it doesn't engulf the body of the previous candle. Right? Instead, it, what it does is that it closes below more than the halfway mark of the previous candle. So we can see that, you know, if you look at it in terms of strength, right, the bearish engulfing pattern clearly is a stronger one followed by a dark cloud cover. But but it doesn't mean that, you know, you can't trade a dark cloud cover because if you look at this from a big picture perspective, you would understand that the price, right, tried to break out higher, got rejected by by sellers, right, who pushed the price down lower and finally closing near the low of this candle here. So you can see that the upward spike followed by the reversal is rejection of higher prices. This tells you that there is a selling pressure coming in, right? And it's a valid entry trigger for me to go short on the next candle open. So when the candle, when the market open on the next candle, I will look to place, right? An order here at the open to short this market. For stop loss, I like to set it usually a distance above this uh, high. So probably somewhere here. And as for target, you can set it just before this swing low, somewhere about here. So in this case, this will likely be a winning trade, right? As you can see, market then collapse lower, made a reversal before it hits your target over here. Okay, so this is just one example. So let's move on and have a look at another one. Okay, so this is the chart of Canadian against the Japanese yen, the daily time frame as you can see over here. So again, applying the Tay formula, let me ask you, what is the trend of this market? The trend is in a downtrend. No, I'm just kidding. It's an uptrend, okay? You can see from left to right, market is heading higher. It's an uptrend. Area of value. Right, you can see the price coming into this area of value, this area of support over here. And one more thing to add is about the area of values that, let me just draw this first, this area of support. One thing to add is that as you trade the markets, right, sometimes you might get lucky and you have multiple confluence factor, multiple areas of value coming together. So in this case, I will overlay the 50 period moving average and you'll see what I mean. You can see that this market tested the 50 MA once, twice and it's back here once again for a third time and the 50 period moving average you know it's a uh, respected or rather the market respects the 50 period moving average and at the same time right this area coincides with this area of support as well so this is what i call stack areas stack areas where multiple areas of value come together right and you know to me it's a high probability area to trade the markets so and finally the third thing we are looking for is entry trigger and you can see over here this is a bullish engulfing pattern. The body of this green candle has engulfed, has covered the body of the previous candle. So what this is what we call a bullish entry trigger. So we have all three criteria, right? The trend, 
the area of value, which is the 50 period moving average and the area of support and an entry trigger, which is the bullish engulfing pattern. So what I'll do is I will enter on the next candle open. Okay, so let me just remove the area of value first. So what I'll do is I will look to enter at the opening price. So let me just draw this line over here so you can see this is where I will enter my trade, the opening price. Okay, so I'll put it in green so you can see and understand this. Right? So this is the opening price of this candle. So I've highlighted in green. Okay, so the next thing, where do we set our stop loss? Usually I set it one ATR below this swing low. I'll share with you how to do it shortly. But for now, let me just say that my stop loss will be somewhere here, a distance below the swing low. And the reason why I set my stop loss a distance below this uh, swing point is because there are times, right, where the markets actually swing down lower, take out the lows over here, and then continue higher. And I will get stopped out, right, too early, right, if I set my stops just below the low. So usually I like to give it some buffer, right, so I don't get, you know, stopped out prematurely. So that's the reason, reason right, for me, you know, setting my stops uh, a distance below the low. And as for target, I would set it just before this swing high. And the reason why you can consider setting your target before the highs or before the resistance is because you know this is a potential area where sellers might come in. So it makes sense to be looking to take profits right before the selling pressure come in and which could you know reverse the price down lower. So if you want to be more conservative, if you want to capture a swing in the markets, this is a good level, a good area that you can reference to. So at this point, you can see that I have you know identified the entry, the stops and your target. So another tool to share with you is you can use this tool right called I'm not sure what's the name, but you click on this, right? Click long position. You can actually assess, right, your risk to reward on this trade. So you just click on the green line here and this thing will come up. So what you need to do is that you will realize that there are three circles. This top circle, middle circle, and popsicle. I'm just kidding. This is the bottom circle, okay? So what you want to do is to adjust the circle to all these three lines. So this one over here, the center circle is at the green line. The red circle here, or rather the bottom circle, adjust it to the red line over here okay and the top one over here the top circle adjust it to the blue line over here that's what you'll do okay so once you've done that you can actually assess right your risk to reward your potential risk to reward on this trade so let me illustrate to you how to read this so you can see over here at the bottom here it tells you that your stop loss is 134 pips 134.6 pips your target is 155 pips so from a risk to reward standpoint right it is a one to 1.15 so in other words right you're actually risking one dollar to potentially make a dollar and 15 cents on this trade okay so you can see that you know if this trade right you take this trade and 50 percent of the time right you get winners 50 percent of the time you get losers right in the long run you will be a profitable trader because your reward right which is in this case 1.15 is greater than your potential loss which is this uh, one over here right so this is how you use the risk to reward tool to know how much you can potentially make right and how much you can potentially lose on this trade based on your risk to reward. So with that said, right, let's move on to another trading example. Oh yeah, before I forget, right, since we are on a topic of risk to reward, another thing that I want to highlight is this, right? So another way to interpret your risk to reward is, let's say you risk 1% of your trading account on each trade, okay? And if you have a loss on this trade, you will lose 1%. But if the price hits your target, right, it is a potential risk to reward of 1 to 1.15. So you could potentially make a 1.15% return on this trade if you risk 1% on the trade. So if you risk 2% on your trade, right, your potential loss on this trade is 2% and your potential gain on this trade is just multiplied by 2, which is 2.3% profit on this trade if the market reaches your target. So this is another way that you can use to interpret right, your risk to reward ratio based on the percentage that you are risking on each trade. Okay, so for now, let's uh, move on to the next trading example. So this is the chart of uh, play, Dave and Buster's entertainment. So again, right, going with, going through the Tay formula, we can see that this market is in an uptrend. Area of value, you can see this market coming into this area of support over here. And finally, we have a valid entry trigger. This is what I would call a, it's not really a bullish engulfing pattern and neither is it a hammer, but to, still it's a, valid entry trigger to go short because you can see rejection of lower prices the price come down into this area of support okay just let me just highlight come down in this area of support at one point it was trading near these lows before the buyer stepped in and pushed the price higher closing back above the area of support so what i'll do is again i will look to enter on the next candle open 
which is uh, this ugly looking candle here. Okay, so my entry will be on the candle open here. So it's, let's put it to green. Stop loss, right? Now let me share with you how do you actually set your stop loss right, such that you don't get stopped out of your trade you know, prematurely. So what you'll do is that if I just go back in time, you can see over here, what I'll do is I'll add on one ATR below this low over here, below this low. So one ATR, just pull out your ATR indicator, which is this one here, or this is ROC. Let me just close this. Let me just uh, find it for you. Look for ATR. Okay, and I will change this to 20 period and SMA. That's kind of like my own default settings. So you can see that over here, it is 2.03. Okay, it tells you that over the last 20 days, this particular stock play has moved an average of $2.03, right, over the last 20 days. So what you want to do is take this number, right, find out what's the low over here, and minus 1 ATR, which is minus 2.03. So what I'm going to do is to find out what's the low of this candle. The low of this candle is $40.81, right, as shown over here. Okay, you can see, $40.81. So I'm going to take 40.81 minus 2.03, and that gives me 38.78. Okay, 38.78, using my trusty calculator here. So I'm going to change this to rate, and I'm going to set this to 38.78 which is uh, here. There you go. So the red one here is my stop loss. So the way to interpret this red color line is again, basically from here, all the way down to this red line over here, okay, is one ATR. And the one ATR value is $2.03 as shown here. So the next thing to do is again, my target, I like to set it just before the recent swing high, probably somewhere here. And let's change this to blue. Got it. And in this case, you can use the risk to reward tool and you know assess your risk to reward again if you want to. But what I'm trying to share over here is that you can see what I, I'm referring to when you know the market comes back, okay, comes back down lower and then bounce up higher again. So in this case, right, because you set your stop loss, right, a distance away, right, from support, a distance away from it, right, you don't get stopped up prematurely just because you know the price spiked through it. You have uh, some kind of buffer protection. Okay, so this hopefully this example, uh, this example gives you a good idea to how to set a proper stop loss, and also at the same time to let you know that uh, uh, this trade right it hasn't hit our target over here. It may or may not. So again, the Tay formula is not foolproof, right? You will have winners, you will have losers along the way. Be prepared, embrace it. So with that said, let's move on to another example. Okay, so now this is the chart of FCX. This is a stock, and it's on a daily time frame. So using the Tay formula, trend is uptrend as you can see area of value this one over here previous resistance which became support support and we're back at support again entry trigger okay this is interesting so for the entry trigger for me personally i wouldn't be looking to buy on this candle open here because if i just go back in one candle even though we have this bullish price rejection here as you can see looking something like a hammer i wouldn't be interested to buy on the next candle open why is that and it's because of the way I define my support resistance. The way I would draw it, right, would probably be something like this on the chart over here. Probably somewhere about here, okay? So let me just change this to black. So you can see, right, at this point, the price has broke below support, but it has yet to break and close back above it. So at this point, right, this could actually become previous support, right, which could now become resistance. So I have no idea whether, you know, it's whether it will become resistance or not. So I want like a confirmation from the market to tell me that it can break and close back up above support. And it's only on this candle here where the market actually did break and close back up above support. And also there's actually uh, a sign of strength as you can see over here, this lower shadow, this lower wick, it tells me that you know there are buyers right stepping in, right, helping to push the price to close near the highs of the day over here. So this to me is a sign of strength and on top of it, it has you know managed to break and close above support. So I will look at these two candles as a whole, right, and then see it as a bullish price rejection. And only then, right, will I be looking to enter on the next candle open. So in this case, the next candle open, let's say my entry is somewhere here. Okay, so let's change this to green for entry. And as for stop loss, again, one ATR below this recent swing low, I'm guessing will be somewhere here. I'm not going to do the calculation since I've done it earlier. And as for target before this recent swing high, somewhere here, change to blue. 
So pretty much the same old stuff that we've gone through, this one over here. And then from here, you can actually assess your risk to reward. Use this tool, you use the long position since you're looking to buy. Click over here. Then you just adjust the circles. This one go to the red line. This one here go to the blue line. And this one here is at the green line. And from a risk to reward standpoint, you can see that for this trade, you are risking four two two, rather four point two two. All right, to potentially make four point three eight. So you're risking about four dollars and twenty two cents to make four dollars and thirty eight cents. So from a risk to reward ratio, is about risking a dollar to make one dollar and four cents. So this is pretty much a. Uh, this example for FCX. In this case, yep, it would have been a winning trade for this example. So now let's move on to our final trading example. Okay, now this is the chart of AV's budget group. The ticker is CAR, CAR, and this is the daily time frame. This is a stock as well. So using the Tay formula, you can see that this market is in an uptrend. What about the area of value? So if you look at this, right, you can see that this market actually didn't come into any area of support at all. So for area of value, we are not going to go with our usual support. We will go with this 20 period moving average. You can see that this market respects the 20 MA, tested once, twice, three times, and then back here for a fourth time. So you can see that the 20 period moving average right, is acting as an area of value for this particular market. Now what about entry trigger? Again, right, this you might be familiar, you can say that this is a, a hammer, okay, but I don't want you to focus on this hammer for now. Instead, I want you to learn, right, or to recall about the trend continuation candlestick patterns that you've learned earlier, namely the falling tree method and the rising tree method. But as you can see over here, there is no rising tree method on this chart, right, because I said that that pattern actually rarely occurs. But what you have instead is a bull flag, right, you can see over here, this looks similar to a rising tree method. This is actually what we call a bull flag, right, in a classical technical analysis. So this is the upward momentum, followed by this pullback, which is what we call the bull flag pattern. And if the price can break above the bull flag, it's a valid entry trigger to go long. So in this case, let me just share with you how you can actually time your entry. What you can do is you draw the uh, highs of the flag like this. And what you can do now is to wait for the price to break and close right above this so-called downward trend line. So you can see on this candle, the price break and close above this downward trend line. When that happens, you can look to enter on the next candle open, which is here. So you enter on this candle here. Let me just use the green color line that you're familiar with. Okay, let me change this to green. Now what about your stop loss? So for stop loss, you can actually set it as usual, a distance below this swing low. So what you can do, or you can use the 50 period moving average. So if your 50 period moving average is here, you can set your stop loss here, but you can see it's gonna be pretty done wide. Okay, so in this case, let's go, to, go with a one ATR below this low somewhere about here is your stop loss okay red uh red color okay now what about target as you can see over here right, your target here is a bit interesting because this market here is now actually very close to this swing high if you set your target here right you can see that from a risk to reward standpoint it's not going to quite make sense right you're probably going to risk one dollar to make like 30 cents or 40 cents so in this case what you can do is that since you see that this market is in a nice strong trending market you can actually look to trail your stop loss right so you can attempt to ride this trend on this market so how to trail your stop loss what you can do is to use a tool like the 50 period moving average so in this case you can see that the market did break out higher and continue higher what you can do is to overlay with the 50 period moving average and only to exit right when the price breaks and close below the 50 period moving average so in this case you can see that the price is still above it so until it goes down lower here and breaks and close below the 50 period moving average then right you will exit the trade if not you continue holding it right to attempt to ride this trend right for as long as it lasts so this is more of a trend following technique right whereas the earlier examples i shared with you were swing trading techniques. Now, if you've enjoyed this training so far, right, then I recommend you get a copy of this book called Price Action Trading Secrets. So this over here, right, you can go down to this website here called Price Action Trading Secrets. It's a 140 page physical book and it's colored, right? So let me just show you inside. You can see over here, 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 right? It's a full color physical trading book and we will cover deeper, right, about price action trading, right? You'll learn how to draw support resistance, how to tell when support will break. You know, we dive deeper into candlestick patterns. You'll learn reversal trading strategies, breakout trading strategies, how to optimize your trading performance, how to 
adopt proper risk management so you don't blow up another trading account and much, much more. All this is covered in uh, Price Action Trading Secrets book. And when you get your copy today, I will also include three bonuses for you. Bonus number one is the PDF version of Price Action Trading Secrets. So while you have to wait about four weeks for the book to be delivered to you, the moment you, you know, check out, right, I will also send you this digital version, the PDF to your email so you can start reading immediately without having to wait for a few weeks. And also bonus number two, I will send you this position sizing calculator so you will never blow up another trading account again because you will know, right, how to actually calculate the exact number of units to trade, right, such that, you know, you only risk a fraction of your trading account. And finally, bonus number three, part-time trading secrets webinar. This is an exclusive webinar where you will learn, right, how you can become a consistently profitable trader without quitting your full-time job. So all this and more in part-time trading secrets. If you're interested, just click any of this green or rather blue button. You'll be brought to the uh, checkout page at the bottom over here. Okay, and here's the thing, right? I know there's a lot of trading books out there, right? And Price Action Trading Secrets is just one of the many. But what I'm going to do is that if you read Price Action Trading Secrets and within 60 days you find that this book isn't for you, you didn't get the value, right, that you expect, well, I'll be more than happy, right, to refund you in full, right? So this way there's no risk on you. And the best part is you can still keep the book and the bonuses. How's that for being fair? So if that sounds like a deal to you, then just head down to PriceActionTradingSecrets.com. I'll put the link somewhere below this video. Get your copy of it, right? I wish you good luck, good trading. I will talk to you soon.